this morning? Ugh. Apparently it's spring. Good morning and welcome to Morning Beer. I just got back from Buffalo, New York, and I have Keytar Bears. It's a sour ale made with strawberry, pineapple, vanilla, marshmallow, milk, sugar, 5.8% ABV in these beautiful 16 fluid ounces from Thin Man Brewing out of Buffalo, New Buckin, York. Oh, it's a collaboration. Aslan Beer Co., Aslan Beer Co., and Thin Man. I don't know, it says that on the top, but it doesn't say anything else. What I will tell you is that I had this beer in Buffalo at the brewery, and I had to make more room in my luggage because we needed to have a lot of these. Um, it's that same vein of beer, like the Lucky Charms thing. It just tastes like fruity pebbles or like Captain Crunch. It tastes like Captain Crunch, the berry version sour it's strawberry it's marshmallow it's delicious which you know what if you're one of those people who's like wants to try beer so bad you're willing to pay five hundred dollars on ebay for it that's cool that you got money to just throw around like that <laughs> help a girl out or you can be a smart person and put some beer in a french press with your favorite cereal and just infuse it at home a little, little do-it-yourself info there kids that's all I gotta say. Uh, Thin Man Brewery in Buffalo was definitely one of my favorite places for beer. Wait, I'm gonna say it like this. Thin Man Brewery in Buffalo was my favorite place for beer, for sure. The atmosphere was great. Um, there wasn't much else though. There was, I, I, they apparently used to have an extensive bottle list and some good food, but I, they just didn't catch my attention for those things. Uh, what was interesting though is that the main places to go in Buffalo for beer, the great places, Thin Man Brewing, Coulter Bay, and then Allen Burger Adventure, Burger Venture, which has really good food, are all owned by one guy who uh, opened this place called the Blue Monk back in the early 2000s, somewhere in there maybe, and he basically started the craft resurgence in Buffalo. So now his three locations are pretty much the coolest spots. That being said, uh, the wings that I had at Coulter Bay weren't that great, but you know, cause now I'm a wings specialist. I do understand them now. I uh, I also stopped by Big Ditch, which was great. I have a crunchy skim, turn around the inside. Blue cheese really helps. And the right amount of sauce. Wow, those wings are hard Brilliant. And it's like just before noon. You can wing for breakfast here. And they're called just chicken wings, not buffalo wings. And thank you, Sam and Mike, for the walkthrough in the back and to see your processing facility and the brewing system. Apparently, they're at capacity and absolutely worth it. Food there was great. Uh, really good beer. I have a couple of their beers as well. I'm going to set up a bottle share here, much like what I did in Buffalo. That travel through beer is the most fun. If at any point in your life you are going from one place to another, just hit up your favorite beer network and shuffle some beers over with you and you'll probably find amazing people and get to taste delicious things. I, I love it. It's so much fun. The bottle share we did was really great. Uh, all the beers at Buffalo Brewing Co. have dates on them that are significant in Buffalo's history. Uh, some things that I learned about Buffalo. <laughs> One, the roads are shit. I thought that my partner was just driving really horribly and was like, dude, can you not hit all the potholes in this road? Uh, and then I realized it's just every road. Apparently during the winter when they have to use the snow plows or whatever, it just cuts up the street. So I don't know how you ladies do your makeable driving there, but kudos to you. Also, uh, because it's an old millionaire city that just basically went poor, there are all these beautiful old buildings from the 1920s and 30s that have been turned into office buildings and apartments. The city hall, absolutely amazing. Uh, it 
does look like that building from Ghostbusters. And maybe that was why I felt a little bit like it It was built by cultists. It's just a beautiful building. You can go all the way to the top of that and check out the whole city and get to see Erie Lake spanning, all that kind of stuff. I've never lived in a place that's um, had snow for a long period of time. So for me, I was really excited. I wanted to be in the snow and there really wasn't any. It was just sort of cold and windy and occasional flurries. I had so much fun with everyone that I encountered there, the beer scene, the foodie scene, as well as my partner's family, which is why we were there. His mom made 16 pounds of corned beef cabbage for St. Patrick's Day, which is a huge holiday in Buffalo. We saw the parade. I would say if you were to go to Buffalo, go check out St. Patrick's Day there. It's a very massive celebration. You can just blend in with all of the revelry going on. A lot of drinking, of course. It was good. All of it was good. I would definitely not suggest to go there for any particular reason, but if you're near Buffalo, check out food things there. Get to Thin Man um, because the beer is great, as well as Coulter Bay and Buffalo Brewing Company and Big Ditch. They were all lovely. Enough about me. On to some things to talk about today. So uh, three years in the making, and this is the sixth collaboration in the Trooper Iron Maiden beer series. This one's pretty interesting though because they used sake yeast to, well, blend to ferment out a lager, which is really interesting. And uh, the sake yeast itself, they had to get um, approval from the Japanese government to actually be, be able to use that yeast because it's um, protected. So that's an interesting deal. They're gonna be releasing that in the next coming months. Uh, if you get your hands on that, let me know. Uh, I'll keep uh, my eyes on the beer tubes to see who's up there and reviewing it, cause that's interesting. I, I, I'll try some. I like it. It's a good idea. It's good. I, I approve. <sighs> so Coors Light, Coors, the company, Molson Coors, they're installing these flashing tap handles at bars around the nation. Gimmick is when Bud Light trolls Coors, the tap handles flash, and then everyone in the bar gets a free beer. So not only do you have to be in a place that serves Coors, but then Bud Light marketing team has to do what they do, and then everyone gets a beer foist upon them. I'm assuming that Coors just had these tap handles. They were gonna be releasing them anyway for some reason, and they were like, hey, let's just tie it to the fact that Bud Light is always trolling us. For us, I don't know if I whatever. Meanwhile, Budweiser itself is making some new collaboration releases in the meat industry. Budweiser branded bratwurst, pulled pork, and spare ribs are coming to grocery stores this summer in partnership with Coleman Meats in an attempt to lure in new younger customers to the meat aisle. Cause the younger customers are the one drinking Budweiser anyway. Ugh, what a stupid way to brand your shit. First of all, millennials don't even really, like, they like small batch and they don't even eat that much meat anymore. Budweiser and Coke, you guys are stupid. Ugh. So if one of your friends is like, oh my God, I saw Budweiser meat in the grocery aisle. You can be like, yeah, I know, it's stupid. Maybe it's delicious, I don't know, but just no thank you. Uh, Kansas has just lifted their grocery store beer ABV limit from 3.2 up to 4.8. Go Kansas! And so is Utah. Minnesota is now the only state in the United States that still has that 3.2 ABV limit on beer in grocery stores. Uh, that's all from me today, my lovely darlings. I do hope you love coming along on my adventures and just have some things to chat about with your friends at the pub tonight. You know, make sure to tell them about that Budweiser meat. <laughs> and uh, also that your next travel uh, trip will involve you packing a suitcase full of beer so you can trade with your beer friends because who needs other friends when you have beer friends? <gasps> ah. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.